So thank you all for coming. This is um, Patty Schramm. I'm the parent resource coordinator here in but for Butler County and various other counties. Um, we have Butler, we have Dark County, um, Montgomery Green and Warren all attending tonight. Um, so we just wanted to, uh, before summer got here, I wanted you, every all the families to be able to meet a couple of organizations. I know they're in Cincinnati for those who are in Dark County or Montgomery County, um, but there's so many virtual opportunities right now and so many other resources. I wanted to be sure that everyone had that opportunity to connect with these groups or organizations. They have been so helpful with information, um, especially just broad information for all the families, events, activities, all those kind of things. So um, this was an opportunity I saw in for in May. I thought it would be a great opportunity to review all this with the families because we have summer months coming up. Um, so I don't need to say more, I don't think, <laughs> about summer months. It's great, it's vacation, but it's also a, a downtime for many you know, students or individuals. So anyway, so without um, going any further um, for SALT, um, I just will refer you again to the links. We have the SALT Live Binder and the SALT Google Drive, which we will be uploading as all the handouts and presentations to. I'm also recording it, so it'll be out there recorded um, and in the SALT Google Drive. And we also, for the benefit of those who want to listen, like while they're in their car or at a appointment, you know, you sit and you're waiting for hours at an appointment. Um, we also made it available as a podcast so you could just listen and then review it later when you get back to your home. So, um, <clears throat> so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so no one has a preference who wants to start off. We can, okay, so do you wanna start off with Joni? Do you wanna start off? Okay, so we have Joni Elfers here from the uh, Down Syndrome, uh, Down Syndrome as Greater Cincinnati, and we'll let her kick off. Thank you. Great. Great. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. Um, I will try to share my screen because I do have a PowerPoint that I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through it pretty quickly because we just have like 15, 20 minutes. Um, I will probably wait for questions at the end so that if I go over, I can answer your questions through email or, or something like that. Um, just because there, you know, it takes a while to cover all that we do, which is a good thing. But uh, let me share my screen here. Um, I don't need the sound. Let's see. Okay, you don't need to see the Zoom link. Hold on. And oh, that's um, it's being like blocked up here. Let me try. I'm kind of like what Patty said and very slow at this. The slideshow, okay, from the beginning. Okay, there we go. Okay, so um, I'm Joni Elfers and I am the School Age Matters Coordinator for the Down Syndrome Association. I'll get into what I do throughout the um, little presentation. Uh, Patty, if I start to get wordy and I'm getting close to my time, feel free to jump in and, and stop me. <laughs> so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what, who, what the Down Syndrome Association is and then our different programs, kind of our main programs. Um, and let you guys know more of what my role is since a lot of you are the school age group. Um, I am the one that would be helping you with things that I can help you with. So our mission is to empower individuals, educate families, enhance communities, and together celebrate the extraordinary lives of people with Down syndrome. That's our overall mission. I'm not gonna go break it down into the vision and core values. Um, I think you can kind of figure out what we're all about. We serve 12 counties. Uh, there's eight in Ohio, one in Indiana, and three in Kentucky. Uh, I do take consults from further out, you know, if there's if there's families that have questions about IEPs or whatever. So if you're in an outlying area and you just have a, a question you want to run by me, hopefully I know the answer. If I don't, I'll try to help you find the answer. So, um, but those are the main counties that we serve. Those are the counties that I'm able to drive to, to go to IEP meetings, behavior meetings, um, peer presentations, anything that has to do with school questions that you have. So we have an early matters program, a school age matters program, and an adult matters program. These are our three main 
areas we serve the lifespan. This is a picture of Maggie Rands. She is our early matters coordinator. And so some of her main things that she does is basically just support families from the time they find out that they're gonna have a child with Down syndrome. Um, support, yeah. So meet families where they are in their journey, provide support at any time, provide resources. You know, sometimes families aren't ready for that support right away. I know when my sister had my niece, she just wasn't ready right away. It took a little bit to digest that her child had Down syndrome and then she was able to reach out to the Down Syndrome Association. Um, Maggie puts on a lot of different classes and programming. She serves the zero to five population and we kind of overlap since kids can start school at the age of three. I start helping families with uh, IEP meetings and stuff at the age of three. So um, we have an e-newsletter that goes out monthly that has a lot of different information in it, whether it's upcoming you know, classes that other organizations do, things like what Patty's leading here with the SALT Talk. Um, Maggie has, well, and this is for all ages too, but if one of our kiddos goes into the hospital, we have hospital comfort bags. Um, and then she helps with the transition to school age matters. She does a lot more than that, but that's kind of just an overview of the early matters program. She always sends a family a, a welcome basket when they find out um, that they're having a child with Down syndrome or have already had the child with Down syndrome. Um, again, a lot of different empowerment classes. Some examples of those are different physical therapy classes, occupational therapy classes, speech therapy classes um, for the little ones, and gymnastics, music therapy, art therapy, communication classes. All of our um, classes for third quarter will be ready and out there for registration on June 1st. And I'll, I'll review what, what's going on in my age group so that you can stay tuned to that if, if anything excites you. So she always has social events too. It's been a little weird this past year, but um, she's gotten through it. Uh, they usually do a spring fling or an ice cream social. And they just last year had fall pogo play before COVID hit. So I'll move on to me and I'll spend a little more time on the School Age Matters program since that's where most of you guys fall. So some of the main things that I do, one of the biggest things I do is attend IEP meetings. Um, I go to over 100 school meetings a year. Not this year, I go to my first in-person school meeting tomorrow. I'm so excited to not be doing it on Zoom. Um, but I'm available to attend behavior meetings. I can do observations of students. Um, where I go in and, you know, I might spend two hours or three hours there and just provide the staff with uh, different ideas of things that might help. Uh, my approach into schools, and this is important to know, my approach is not like an attorney's approach. I am there to support both the family and the school and try to come up with the best plan that we can, can have for that student with Down syndrome. If I need to go an advocacy route, I will do that. Um, you know, if I feel like the district isn't doing right on the child, I will go that route, but I more prefer like, let's come to the table and let's try to figure this out. Um, and then if it needs to go to an attorney, I usually will refer out because I like to try and keep my uh, relationships positive with the school district. Um, so yeah, I do those observations and then provide the staff with some feedback. I do staff in services. So, you know, I've had a couple districts call me and say, hey, we have an in-service day. Can you do a, a one hour presentation on Down syndrome and a student with Down syndrome and kind of the best ways that they generally learn. Uh, so that's available to the districts. Uh, I do peer presentations where I go in and I talk to the gen ed students about what Down syndrome is and how students and people with Down syndrome are more like everyone else than different. I do talk about the differences so that they can understand more about Down syndrome, but really try to highlight that this person, even though there might be some communication issues or whatever, this person is more like you than they are not. And we also have a um, more alike than different video out there. It's like an eight minute video. And if you go to uh, YouTube and just put DSAGC more alike than different, you can find it, or you can email me. Patty can give you my email address. You can email me and I can get that to you too. But that's been nice both for the students and I've had teachers say, I know that was directed towards students, but I did learn from it. So that's something that's out there. Um, and then informational packets. This is, this is an example of one. So I've created this document. It's called Breaking Down the IEP. So even if you are 
not in the Down syndrome world, if you're in the autism world, um, this is a document that could help you. It just goes step by step. And I, the IEP changes every year and it's different per state and different per, you know, but if, but this just kind of gives you an overview, breaks down each section, gives parents things to think about like, okay, what, what goals do I want to focus on? Okay, let's look at reading. Let's really break down reading. What are all the different parts of reading? Um, what do I want them to be tracking? So again, even if you're not in the Down syndrome world, this is a document that if you want to reach out to me, I'd be happy to share it with you. This is just a picture of me doing one of my peer presentations this school. Um, it was St. Patty's Day. That's why everybody's in green. But um, they have three little kiddos in the same grade that all have Down syndrome. And it's just, that's one of my favorite things that I get to do is go out and do peer presentations. So different programming, all kinds of different programming throughout the year. So what's on this screen is we have a cheerleading squad that has just blown up over the past few years, not last year, but hoping to get it going again this year. And what it is, is we learn a routine and then we connect with different high schools around the tri-state area. And we go out to their varsity basketball games and we perform the routine with their high school varsity cheerleaders at the half at, at halftime and you know it's just awesome <laughs> standing ovation every time and the kids think they're superstars and it's just so much fun great community awareness so we have a bike camp um, that's the picture in the middle top and usually we have a bike camp we will have it next year we had to skip last year and this year because of covid but um and that is a week-long camp it's through i can shine and um, they come out, they bring these adaptive bicycles. We have like 80 volunteers that come and we're able to serve 40 uh, individuals that have Down syndrome. We open it up to Down syndrome. Like I think it, we did um, I, the first 32 slots were for folks with Down syndrome, but then we open it up at, after that to any dif differing ability. Um, and then if we don't fill it, we open it up everyone you know where we might have half that have autism and half that have down syndrome or whatever it is so that's really cool 85 percent of our kiddos that come to bike camp are on two wheels by the end of the week it's an amazing week so something to watch out for next summer whether you have down syndrome whether your child has down syndrome or not um, we have summer tutoring we've had spring and winter tutoring this year too because of covid um i don't remember what that picture is in the, oh, art therapy classes. Yeah, that's what's down in the left-hand corner. We have a week-long volleyball camp and that's actually coming up in third quarter. Um, it'll be ready for registration on June 1st. And then we do fun different social outings like the one that you see on the right bottom. Um, that was at Ninja, I forget what the name of it is, but it's some Ninja place, it was really fun. So for quarter three, I wanted to let you know what we have going on. So. This will be July, August, and September. We're gonna have Girl Scouts. This is the first time we're doing that. So it's five weeks in a row um, and there'll be a Girl Scout class. We have summer tutoring going on in the month of July. That's on Tuesdays and Thursdays during the day, two different sessions per day. Um, we're gonna have, a, this, this is new and cool too. Um, we're gonna have a back to school bash at Kirkwood Adventure Park in Wilmington um, and they, that's through Matthew 25 Ministries. They approached me, actually my brother works there and they're like giving us their space for free and giving every every registrant $5 to their concession stand. I, I'm really excited about it. Uh, we have had a virtual um, cooking class going on and it's been really, really popular and very, very cool because the kids are learning in their own kitchen. They're learning their own supplies. They're learning their own ovens. Um, it's been great. We've had a great attendance and then we're gonna continue that. We're doing that once a month. We're gonna continue that because it's been so great. We're actually gonna have two different chefs um, doing two different classes per month. So that'll be out there if you visit our website. Like I said, we have that volleyball camp and that's gonna be at St. Margaret of York. Um, and that's in July, July 13th through the 16th. We're gonna have a putt-putt league at World of Golf um, in Kentucky. And that's gonna be for our teens. I think it's teens on up through adults, or maybe we did open it up to the six-year-olds and above, I'm not positive. We're gonna have a running group that is 
um, preparing for the pig abilities race, which is the one mile race part of the pig. Um, so we've got a guy who wanted to lead that. So that's gonna be happening in quarter three. We have a fun outing at the Florence Y'all's game on July 25th, um, where our cheerleaders are gonna be performing before the game and they have a lot of fun things planned. And then we have like once a month bingo and once a month dance parties. So that's kind of the stuff that's out there for my age group that's coming up. And if you go to www.dsagc.com, you'll see all that um, June 1st. And you'll be people will be able to register. Some of it's first come, first serve and books up like this. So if some of that is something that you're interested in, I would suggest getting on there. Put a note in your calendar and, and get on there on June 1st. So these are some of the other things that we've done. We have a, a winter dance that we do in February. Um, I guess I'm probably getting a little close to time. Um, we did have a basketball clinic just recently. We have golf lessons going on this quarter, um, the dance classes, we've had fitness classes. Um, all kinds of different stuff. So our adult matters, again, they have a whole bunch of different programming. I won't go into it because we're running out of time, um, but all kinds of different, different classes available and that'll be out June 1st too. So you can check that out if you have a child that is um, 18 or older. Our adult matters program also has different resource binders and things like that. Um, you know, they provide support, phone calls, whatever you need. You just call us and we'll figure out how we can help you. We have social clubs, um, lots of social opportunities for our adults. We have an independent living retreat that happens at Xavier University usually. Hopefully it'll be back on this year, I'm not positive. Um, but that's a weekend where they're just learning independent living skills. It's, it's, so cool. We have a um, healthy aging toolkit. So if you are interested in that, you can reach out, we can get you that. And then let's see, different events for all ages. We have our annual buddy walk, which usually brings 13,000 people to um, Sawyer Point. And it's really fun. Hopefully we're gonna be able to do it this year. We'll see. We usually have this, hopefully you can't hear my dog barking. He's being very obnoxious, I'm sorry. Um, we have this, we usually have a, an education series that happens on the 21st of each month that's kind of went on hold when COVID started because we had to redo everything that we were doing. But we're hoping that starts back up. So that can, those are usually informational sessions for parents usually, but they, they can also change too. Uh, our outreach coordinator is kind of on hold right now, so I won't even go into that, uh, but we, we do do outreach to different areas and we'll be hiring that position coming up. So if you think that you might be interested, reach out. This is a big part of where we are and this will kind of wrap up my little part of the session. We have um, various community groups and they are either, you know, by where you live because we serve so many counties or they are like birth age group so that parents with kids that are the same age, they can kind of move through it together. There's Facebook pages, there's different outings that they do. Um, the community groups are, we have a really strong Down syndrome community in Cincinnati and around Cincinnati. And these community groups are a big part of it. So I'm not gonna go into all this because I don't wanna take up everybody else's time, but um, I'll check out the chat room. And if you guys wanna put in your uh, email address, if you put a question in there, put in your email address and I will respond to you that way while we um, turn it over to others. Go through this just to see if there's anything that I forgot to say. Those are just some of our fun community group events. There. And you said everybody can find these events on your website, right? Under like events or calendar or? If you go under pro, I think it's under programs. There's all these different headings up top and it's under programs. And then you can see all these different events. It'll, it'll give you the third quarter. So we do it a quarter at a time and you'll be able to see what's coming up in the next quarter and register there. So there is a question out there about getting a copy of breaking down the IEP. You'll be able to see it in the chat. Um, is that something that um, they can find on the website or is it something that you would have to send directly? Yeah, actually, I think it is out on the website. Um, 
I will double check, but I can send it out. I don't mind sending it out directly also. Uh, okay. it's, so we have a resources section on our website and it's broken down into like, I don't know exactly, family resources, education resources. It falls under education resources. But if whoever that person is that put that in there, if you put your email address in there, I'll send it to you directly. And anyone else who wants it, do the same thing. Okay, yeah, and I can even get the link and send it out to everybody. Okay. Um, or we can, we'll just post, we can post the link also in the um, live binder and they can okay. find it. They'll find it in there as well. Should I just send it to you, Patty? You can, and I can send it out to, to those who have asked. I can send it out to them or just send it out to the group. Just everybody let me know who would like it and I'll send it to you. Great. That okay. works. Well, thanks so much. I'm sorry. I like feel like I would just went whoo, right through that, but <laughs> wanted to make sure I gave the others chances to talk. So have a well, great think, night. Thanks for I, coming. Thank you. I think it was a great overview. Um, and again, anyone who's on here, you know, even if your child doesn't have Down syndrome, just reach out to Journey. If something in here, you know, if something of interest looks, you know, the event or something looks interesting that you want to know more about, just reach out to her directly. Um, can you put your email, Joni, in the um, chat box so they yep. would have that? Okay. So the next person will we'll go ahead over to the Autism Society of Greater Cincinnati, if that's all right. Um, so we have Mary Ellen, Mary Helen, Richard here. Mary and Helen. Helen, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you you have um, Hadia. Yes. Khan, and so I'll let you guys take over who's talking or giving your presentation. And then when you finish, then Anne, just go ahead into it then. Okay. I'm going to start. Um, and then I'm going to turn it over for the bulk of it to Hadia. Um, I am Mary Helen Reeker. I'm the executive director, the CEO, something, um, of the Autism Society. And I really just want to give a, a brief overview. And then I really am going to turn it over to Hadia for talking about our programs and what we do. So the Autism Society serves eight counties in the greater Cincinnati area. Um, we serve four here in um, Ohio, one in Indiana, and three in Kentucky. We've been around for 50 years, so this actually, uh, 2021, is our 50th anniversary, so you'll probably see a lot of information about that. We started um, really as a grassroots group of parents who had children with autism and were really trying to figure out how to access services and find support for their family. Um, so... From there, we really have grown and developed a number of programs. Our longest running program is our info and resources line. This is a helpline call center where you can talk to a live person about any questions you have about autism. You can ask for um, a dentist who might help uh, with your child who understands kids with autism. You can ask about diagnosis for an adult. You can ask for more information about autism, you name it, you can ask it. If we don't have the answer, we'll find the answer and we'll help connect you to what you need. That's our longest running program. That's been running about 20 years now. Um, from there, we have really grown um, into support groups and um, recreational and social activities. And for that, I'm gonna turn it over to Hadia. Hi. I'm Hadia Khan. I'm the program coordinator of Autism Society. So we have different programs. I'm going to start with the kids program. Um, we meet every Saturday mornings um, from 9 to 10. Um, either we um, make something, um, we cook something. We make Last week, we make Mother's Day cards. Um, at times, we do scavenger hunt, depending upon um, who is able to volunteer with us, we coordinate that. And if not, we do fun activities around the kids. Um, and the parents are usually involved with that because at that age, uh, you do require some parents um, input. Then we have the teen group. Um, that I think is the most fun group because every time either they talk about something, um, issues they're having in school, or they just want to play trivia games. Um, and at times now they are all about um, online games. So everybody downloads a game and everybody plays together. So we make sure um, the language is, you know, appropriate of the group. And we have seen amazing uh, friendship within that support group. And now they are developing outside this. So it's a good social interaction for those teens as well. Um, then we um, 
And the good thing is with being everything being online, we have people from all over the United States. And um, for our adult group, I'm gonna go with our adult. Um, we have two programs with our adult. Uh, one is the support group, and then we have the um, game night, and then we have one trivia night. So with that, we have um, people from all over the world. There are some adults who got diagnosed later in life. Um, there are uh, some people who are in the process of being diagnosed. Um, they always knew they were different. So how we can help them? How can we help them adjust in the community? Uh, then we have parent support groups. Um, there we discuss um, issues with the early diagnosis, what issues the school has, the IEPs, um, how to get waivers, um, how to file appeal with the waivers. Uh, we've talked about party training, enemas, you know, you, you think about it and we talked about it. Um, and the best thing is it's parents helping parents. We, a lot of autistic kids have a lot of behavior issues, the ABA therapies, how to get hold of people, who's the best therapist, the strategies with work with each other. Um, and then lastly, we have our black and brown um, parent support groups. Um, that is not just defined with black and brown families. At times, we have other people in that too. Um, and it's just discussion of um, why at times people are being discriminated and the resources are not as much as available to as other people. So how we can um, eliminate those gaps, how can we educate the parents about the resources out there, how they can we can empower them to be their own voice and as well as for their kids. So um, these are most of our programs. Um, let me know if you have any questions around those programs. I don't see any questions listed um, at the moment. Um, but you had mentioned all the, the programs or the different events, and you also have a Facebook. I see a lot of these events posted on Facebook and then on your website. Um, trying to find, remember if I found, I think you have a calendar and a list of events, I think both, right? Yes. I hope and I'm not. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Go ahead. I'm trying to figure out how to unmute myself. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. so we have a calendar of events which has our community events on it. It shows our events but it shows any other events that we're aware of. So tonight's salt is on our calendar because we think it's important that families are aware um, of this program. Um, any other events, um, when Cincinnati Children's does potty training or some of their other trainings, that ends up on our calendar as well. Because again, we feel like it's really vital that families don't have to search to the best of our ability to do so to find out what um, what is available for them. So we have that, um, where we have a fairly active Facebook page um, and our website, we are continually updating what's happening there. We also have um, a number of collaborative or partnership uh, programs. So one of those is our possibilities for diverse abilities, which we're working with the Regional Autism Advisory Council as well, and a number of others to bring, um, right now to bring quarterly seminars to families. So for example, May 20th, next Thursday, we will have a conversation on early childhood lessons for life. Um, this fall, we'll have um, a program on educational options and um, then post-secondary options um, later in the year, all with the hope of culminating in um, an expo in 2022. Um, if anybody remembers the Autism and Special Needs Expo, we're bringing that back, um, hopefully in person in February of 2022. And just to make sure parents understand, this is not just strictly autism. You can have other diagnoses or other disabilities to attend or, or just to find out information. Absolutely. Um, we, I always tell people we don't check a diagnosis. So if people have a question, they can call us. If we're not the right organization, we'll help you find it. But um, while, we, while some of the work we do is autism specific, we aren't going to tell you that if you don't have autism, you can't attend or you can't ask us questions or you can't be involved. Great. And I, I think that's great that you open it up and being that you have people attending from all some other states and what you said international too, right? We have people from have Canada. Yeah. We have people from Australia. Um, we have people from Oregon, um, Minnesota, um, Denver, um, you name it and we have it. 
So those of you who are in Dark County, Montgomery County, <laughs> uh, Green or Warren, Hamilton or whoever, I think you're, you feel free to attend. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Everybody and anybody is welcome. Please join us. And you don't know if it's not the right fit for you, but if it's not, we'll help you find the right fit. And we have a person who is nonverbal and she uses iPad as a speaking device. Um, so we try to accommodate that. And she is, she started with one time and now she is, um, everybody waits for her turn. They make sure she's included. They'll reach out to her. She is active. So, you know, no matter what your disability is, um, she doesn't even have autism, but she is very vital part of our program as well. Well, thank you. I don't see any um, questions in the chat box or anything, but parents, if you get a question or think of one, um, put it in the chat box or save it to the end. And um, when I stop recording, I mean, we can do a live, you know, chat as well. Um, but um, feel free to put your questions there in the chat box. And we'll go on if there's no questions for the Autism Society. I'll go ahead and turn it over to Anne. Great, thank you. I am going to share my screen as well. Um, bear with me. All right, my name is Ann Tapia and I'm the coordinator for the Regional Autism Advisory Council of Southwest Ohio, otherwise known as RAC. Um, so I'll, I have just a couple slides that I wanted to share with you. So I'll go through them um, quickly because I, I do want to give you all time to ask your questions. Um, but the idea of RAC is really that we want to help people in our Southwest Ohio region to have the best and highest quality of life possible. And that includes um, those living with autism, family members, and the professionals who support them. Um, so we do that by bringing together stakeholders of all, all types. Um, so professionals, family members, caregivers, um, professionals from all walks. So we have school folks, uh, county board, um, all age ranges from early intervention through adulthood. Um, and we together collectively try to think about what resources exist and make sure that we're sharing those out with one another, as well as identifying the gaps and um, considering how we can address those gaps as a collective whole. Um, so I always tell people how lucky we are in Southwest Ohio that people really do willingly come to the table and transparently share with one another because that's what helps us to move things forward and figure out ways to um, address the problems and, and the gaps that exist. So um, similarly, like um, Hadia and Mary Helen were saying, um, we speak from the autism lens, but so much of what we're talking about really does apply to the greater disability community. So truly all are welcome. Um, and you, you know, to be a partner, to be somebody who comes to the table, I just ask that you bring, you know, an open, willing mind um, who's who's there and present. Um, so there is nothing asked of you other than joining us and participating. Um, so just a bit more, I, we we spent some time because we recognize there's some confusion between RAC and Autism Society and um, other disability groups that are out there. And so we spent some time really clarifying who we are and what we, what we do, what our scope is. And um, so just to be clear, our vision is to support professionals to have what they need to provide the best services possible. Um, but in order to do that, we have to have, again, like I said, all stakeholders. So that includes those with um, living with autism and their lived experience, um, including individuals with autism or other disabilities, as well as family members and caregivers. Um, so just, you know, to be clear about that, the intention, but I will openly say to family members, you know, I hope that you will come with your own personal motivation and um, find yourself engaged in such a way that you have some mutual you know, reciprocity by being there. You know, I, I'm fully appreciating that you may come with your own agenda and ideas of what you're hoping to get out of a meeting, um, but by being willing to share your own experience and being present at that table, we all benefit from that. So um, so the, the um, intention, um, so I can be clear on that, um, is that we all kind of gain from each other's participation. Um, so our values are listed there, and it really just kind of speaks to how we support people. There's um, the idea of building community and thinking across 
um, the lifespan and recognizing the variability across the spectrum and how we can collectively um, support people to be truly um, included. Um, and then the, the whole concept of who and what we are is that collaboration piece. And then another big aspect and really how RAC started was on this idea of sharing knowledge with one another. Um, so we do have training opportunities where we will go out and provide trainings, um, including some first responder trainings and, you know, so community as much as um, those who are in the disability community um, to provide resources and, and information. Oh, we also bring in trainers. So we've had our local experts who have trained as well as um, international experts who we will ask to come and present for us. So um, all levels of training that are available. I have a video that I will share. Um, I think I need to switch my screen now. Give me one second. <clears throat> Optimize my sound and all that fun stuff. Okay. It's a short video, so we would be fine on time. RAC assists organizations in Southwest Ohio to be best equipped to do their work supporting individuals with autism. Oh, sorry, accidentally paused it. Could you hear that okay though? The one thing I know is none of us are alone in these journeys that we take to provide these services. And if we can um, let our guard down and come to the table and, and be collaborative and, and look to see what the needs of our community are, not everything's possible. I think one of the things that I want the community to know is that RAC is a really great place to go to, ha to have your questions answered, to learn what's new, what's up and coming, what's happening in the world of autism, specifically here in Cincinnati. We network with one another and share resources. I often tell people, I don't have to be the expert, I just have to know the experts. And my favorite answer to questions is, I don't know, but I know someone who does. Be Safe is a training opportunity where we bring together first responders and teach them about autism and other disabilities, and then bring together young adults and adults with autism and other disabilities, and they're paired together with the first responders so they have a chance for mutual understanding and learning. What does it say as an organization to be a member of RAC? They could say that they were on the cutting edge of, of really trying to coordinate resources for families and for schools and for practitioners in the communities. As a young professional coming up in her career and focusing on issues with autism spectrum disorders, RAC was uh, such an important learning opportunity for me and I think for many other uh, hospital-based employees who've had the opportunity to, to interface with RAC because it shows us very quickly that there is a whole world of, of resource and opportunity for the children and families that we see outside of our walls. And uh, we know that it's there. We, we know that it's there, but to meet the folks, to meet the people in those agencies, in those settings, um, to work with them, to, to be at the same table was incredibly informative um, for me and I think for a number of my colleagues. And I'm really grateful to the partners um, that I was able to join with and network with. Are there accomplishments that really stand out to you as highlights? During their time as coordinator? It's a, now a 20-year organization, um, and it just started with an idea with a few people at the table, and, and to have, really, we, we see lots of uh, these initiatives come and go. Um, first, autism has sustained and grown itself over time, but so has the organization, and I think that all of those sustainability issues that we talk about just um, certainly as my time as coordinator, we, we just solidify um, and, and to move on. And we built on what the county relationships um, began to be in collaboration and collaborations are not easy. But I think that then we added a lot of the private resources uh, because public private partnerships have become really um, such an important core to the services of RAC. And having everyone at that table has become really, really, um, I think, critical in the success that RAC has had.
think this is the end of it, but now I can't remember <laughs> the last 20 seconds that are going to show up here. Okay, yeah, so this just shows our mission and our vision. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Um, so yeah, I feel like that offers just such a, a nice um, overview of RAC um, and the opportunity to kind of get a sense of, of what it means um, to be involved with RAC. So um, when we say Southwest Ohio, we're talking Butler, Warren, Hamilton, and Claremont. However, um, all are welcome. It just means that I am not necessarily gonna host a task force meeting in Ross County or Logan County or somewhere um, out of my area. But um, even pre-pandemic, we've always offered a virtual option to participate, and we will continue to offer a virtual option to participate in our task force meetings. And you know, similar to the disability category, it's the kind of thing that while we may be speaking specific to resources in Butler County in a specific meeting, that doesn't mean that if you're in Preble County, you're not going to pick up some great information So, um, and, and people that can be resources to you. Um, so I would certainly encourage those of you who are coming from outside of these four counties um, to still you know, think about this as an opportunity to engage and network with folks who are doing similar work and might have some good ideas that, um, that you can borrow and share. So um, when we cover the lifespan, um, so these, each of these are task forces, um, each and of their own that we're, we're thinking about. Um, each of the four counties kind of have their own um, agenda or um, area that they're focused on. And I think it just speaks to how unique each county is in Ohio that, you know, there's just different priorities that come about. Um, so you can see them listed here for what we're currently thinking about and um, focuses that we have at the moment. Um, within our more regional task forces, it covers the whole lifespan. So we have an early intervention task force that really covers all four of these counties. And then again, several other counties that are represented in that um, meeting as well. Um, and specifically thinking about those who are zero to five, six, um, some of them provide services a little bit beyond that zero to three range. Um, we have a transition age, which is you know most relevant to this age group or to this um, set of people here tonight, um, where we're thinking about transition from 14 to whenever you're out of high school. Um, so that may be 18, maybe 22, depending on the, the system and um, how long you're considered within that system. Um, and then we have a group that's thinking about adult services and what happens outside of high school and what services are out there and how can we better support that. We also have a work group thinking about how we can best support black and brown families with disabilities. So again, from the professional lens, the difference between what the Autism Society is doing and what we're doing, um, their Autism Society has a um, parent support group that is for parents by parents, um, whereas this work group with RAC is thinking from a professional lens. There are some systemic barriers um, that Hadia mentioned that we are really trying to tackle and address. We recognize that there, um, we can do better and, and the access to care, access to resources uh, needs to be enhanced. And so we're trying to think about that as a collaborative group, um, again, very well represented regionally um, to address those issues um, and all are welcome there also. And then um, our final one listed here, our safety initiative, um, which incorporates a lot of different things, including that first responder training, but it's also kind of a step back from that, really trying to take a holistic approach to say, you know, we, a lot of the safety um, efforts are reactive and um, that's unfortunate. <laughs> we don't want people to have to go through some kind of crisis or trauma scenario before getting supports and resources. Um, so we're really trying to think about how we can build better proactive supports to protect people with disabilities from becoming victims of crime or um, abuse or neglect. So um, that's a great group and covers a lot of different topics, but that first responder piece is included there. Um, I mentioned our training piece of it. Um, we, especially now in this lovely virtual world, have lots of recorded sessions that we have posted um, and so I've listed the ones from 2021 that are available if you would like to access their, um, we do charge a bit of a fee, but I often say for caregivers, um, it's really kind of a, a nominal fee. We just wanna know that you're coming. Um, so if there's ever a hardship with participating um, because of a fee with a RAC training institute, please reach out and I will be more than happy to 
find a volunteer job or something that I can justify um, wiping away that $10 that's part of the registration. Um, I also have on here, we collect, so by nature of what I do, lots of folks will send flyers and resources my way. Um, and we drop those into a drop box. So that um, link is the second bullet there, second big bullet. Um, and you will find all kinds of flyers um, organized by month and then sometimes for like reoccurring things there by, by organization. Um, Mary Helen mentioned the possibilities for diverse ability. So I have that linked on there as well. You can access um, the, the details to the upcoming events as well as um, we held one in February that was talking about summer supports. And that session was recorded, it's free. And it also includes virtual catalogs. And so there are lots of good resources as you're coming into summer months, trying to figure out what's the plan. Um, that list gets updated as we find out new information. And I mean, as, as late as yesterday, a new camp was released. And so that's getting updated um, with that new information. So please um, check that out, it's a free resource. And then I also like to plug the Ocali ASD strategies in action. Um, these are so well done. It's a total of, um, I wanna say it's like 10 and a half or maybe 12 hours worth of training, but it's self-paced and you can choose what you wanna do. So you have to go through that first one, but then um, you take a track that's most relevant for you and they have a variety of options um, and they really are nice and in-depth and easy to engage with. So um, I would recommend checking those out as well. And then have some resources. Um, so. Uh, as a good social worker, I collect information and I try to share it with others. So um, during the start of the pandemic in collaboration with lots of others, including Autism Society, Greater Cincinnati, we um, began a list of the resources. And I have to tell you in advance, the COVID-19 resources are overwhelming. <laughs> so know what you're looking for and use the index on the side to find um, that specific category. Otherwise, you will just you know, get buried in the weeds of it. Um, but there's a ton of stuff there that is still very relevant to um, today and what's going on. So um, check that out. I'm also linking on here ref resources, not references, resources um, that are linked on the RAC website. Um, and I've put the ones that are um, most frequently asked questions of me. <laughs> so um, we have adapted a booklet that the Indiana Resource Center for Autism has developed called After You Receive an Autism Spectrum Disorder for Teens and Young Adults and made it relevant for Ohio. Um, so it says autism and there's some good information in there about autism, but it's really a great transition book um, when you're thinking about, you know, what, what should I be considering as I transition out of high school? What do I need to say in terms of self-disclosure in an employment scenario? Um, if you're going to college, you know, how do you access those disability services? So it covers a, a nice range of topics for that age range. Um, another popular one that is not disability specific, um, it, covers, it covers all disabilities, is the Healthy Relationships and Sexuality book list. So we held a conference back in the summer of 2019, I think it was, although time is very hard these days. Um, and it was a three-day conference. And from that, we really generated a ton of resources on healthy relationships and sexuality. Um, and I have continued to update that book list. Again, when you host a, um, a training on a specific topic, especially about sex and relationships, all of a sudden people send me information, um, which is great because I just keep adding to that list. So um, I think I most recently updated it in like March of 2021. So um, check that out. Tons of good resources in there, um, no matter where the person may be in terms of um, relationships or sexuality. So lots of good stuff there. Um, I also have a short list of folks uh, who are mental health therapists, clinicians, psychiatrists in the greater Cincinnati area who have declared an understanding of working with people with autism. Um, and so again, that, that would spill over to the greater disability community, especially with like sensory needs and um, those kinds of aspects. Um, so that list of resources is linked on there. And then finally, um, the social workers out of the Division of Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics have created what are called Z-MAPs which are basically, um, if you were to like Google a restaurant and you said, you know, find um, Mexican food 
in my area, you'd get that map and it would show you the little pin drops of all the different restaurants that serve Mexican food in your area. It's a very similar type of resource, but there are three categories. So behavioral health, which is that like mental health side, um, ABA and related resources, oh, ABA as its own, sorry, and then related therapy resources. Um, so your occupational therapy, your speech, all of those kinds of resources. Um, and you can filter and get, you know, some specific um, mileage or insurance type and those kinds of things. So um, that is the rundown. Also, just the idea of linking to other community members as resources. I'm always, as I said in the video, happy to say I don't know and pass on um, the question or get you connected in a warm handoff to somebody who would be a better uh, support to answer your question. There are lots of ways to connect to RAC, so they are all listed here. Please do reach out. Um, the best way in terms of getting involved is really um, popping onto the RAC website and um, signing up for the either a specific task force that interests you, um, or we have a training distribution list in which I, I like to tell people, I'm sorry and you're welcome, but I will blow up your email box <laughs> with all of the things that people send to me and ask me to share. Um, so uh, feel free to um, ask me to get added to that list and we will receive those flyers as well. And I will take questions or questions for the whole group as well. All right, so um, we have a lot of this information we posted in our live binder. So, and also in the Salt Google Drive, like her, like all the presentations that are given tonight um, I've uploaded to the SALT Google Drive, so feel free to reference um, the presentations there. Um, the links, we did put some of the links in the chat box for their websites. Um, Anne's, um, I see, I think I have Anne's and I think I have the Autism Society and different things. We have in our, our live binder, we have recreation and activities tab, and I put a lot of their stuff down in there. So you'll be able to find some of those drop boxes and stuff in there as well. So with that, I'm going to end the recording um, so we can just chat freely, you know, whoever has questions, um, just to protect in case there's any kind of question that comes up for privacy's sake. Um, it's just a nice part of SALT, when, whether we meet in person or whether we meet virtual, just to have that open conversation, um, questions come up. And, you know, sometimes you find out some great information or you can share some information. You know, it all, you know, it's, it, the group is very open. So one second why I stop the um, video. And I'm gonna thank everybody that came tonight um, as I'm finding the stop recording button. <laughs> so one second.